So I'm here to talk about why I moved to LA, Los Angeles, the city of dreams. Um, I moved here about two weeks ago and I think a lot of it has to do with this need for self-actualizing myself, this reason to to really like create something that can have an impact on the planet because that's that's what motivates me that's my why my why is to make a change in the planet it always has been and i think it's really exploring the different contexts and the different ways that i could find in myself in the outer world to make that change um before i was in washington dc and I wholeheartedly believe that international relations would be the pathways for me to make that change. Yet amongst that reality, something that was glowing and, and expanding was my creativity. And I truly came to realize that how we tell stories and how those stories are told have so much impact on our society. And I think as a storyteller myself, I wanted to be in a city that could uphold those realities. Um, I remember the when I was in the airport, the first thing that I saw when I was like sitting in the um, in the Fort Lauderdale airport and kind of looking at my surrounding and seeing everyone around me, I'm like, wow, these people look really relaxed and cool and calm. Um, and then there's this lady in front of me and her shirt said ancestors or the blueprint. And I always believe in this idea that synchronicities, things happen for a reason and, and these messages. And that it really impacted me a lot because it's like the ancestors of the blueprint. It's like, I'm not doing this by myself. Like a lot of people who've come before me has, have paved the way, whether they're African-Americans, whether they're Haitians, whether they're people of color, black and brown, or people from all across different worlds, I think have allowed me to make this leap of faith. Um, so when I went in the airplane, I was overjoyed by, so, by all the Latin American people that I saw, like people were speaking Spanish and there was like this large smile in my face, um, when I was there and I'm like, I can't believe this is happening. Um, I was living in DC for the last five years and I literally threw away 70% of my stuff. Though I would say that the majority of my stuff were books. <laughs> I mailed like boxes after boxes. I think it was 10 boxes home to my parents in Florida. And there were about seven boxes of books that I had to give to the bookstore. And I threw away a lot of clothes as well. It was so liberating because you attach yourself so much to these material things and it gives your life so much meaning. And I, I guess just kind of throwing it away and, and going to the next stage was very much something that was liberating. And I made the decision and, and it's crazy, within the two weeks that I made the decision to leave D.C., I left D.C., I went back home for a few months, and, and I flew one way to L.A. two weeks ago. I think who I want to become and how I want to become this person is I really want to be someone that is well-established within the creative world, uh, within the, the entertainment world. And... I want to be able to use my platform, my connections, my wealth, um, and the, this company that I'm growing, Syllable Studios, to be able to enable underrepresented storytellers, people whose stories haven't been heard, or really contribute to this creative, imaginative space that is Hollywood, that is the entertainment world. Um, and yeah, I think... It, it, it was such a surreal experience, like getting off the airplane and then going and from the airport and then realizing like the Ubers were like two miles away. I had to get into a bus, get into the place where the, all the Ubers are there. And the first person that picked me up was this, I think, I don't know where he was from, but he was definitely Asian. And he was very cheery and positive and, and, and like just ecstatic um, and telling me different types of stories I asked him like what is the soul of the city he's like he's, no one's ever asked him what is the soul of LA and he was thinking as the car was going um, I started to see all these like 
oil, like literally there are oil like fields of oil being pumped underground. It was very surreal. I've never seen anything like this. It was just like, there's a city and then there's an oil thing. Maybe that's why California is so rich as a state. I'm not sure. Um, but as we got closer into the city, like of this California dream, and he, the Uber driver told me that the soul of LA is homelessness, which was really intense because there is a big homeless population here and a lot of people who come in here and have dreams and they, it fails. The system fails them. Another good friend of mine told me that you have to pay to play here. It's like there's a lot of the wealth in terms of the, the, the types of living standard that is required to live here. You have to be able to contribute to that. Um, I don't know. I think being in L.A. is this point in my life where I'm going to finally advocate for myself. <laughs> and I know that sounds like a, a stereotypical um like archetype of someone moving to LA to pursue their dreams. But I think that's at the end of the day, that's it. That's, that's what makes life worth living is I want to see and actualize all my potential, what I'm capable of doing. I think that's it. It's, that's what I want to see. Like coming from a little country such as Haiti and having dreams of being a producer or being a writer or being an actor or a singer or an entrepreneur, all these dreams, I, I don't necessarily, I necessarily, I never necessarily believed those were true because it was always this creative thing that wouldn't give me wealth or wouldn't allow me to be grounded. Um, but I started to realize over the past few years that this creative expression is so deeply tied to who I am. And that, that level of honesty, it has to seep through my actions. And I felt that I really, this next stage, I'm going to turn 30 in November, and I really do believe that this next stage, the next decade, the next 20 years of my life, if I'm still here, <laughs> we never know, but the next 20 years of my life are going to be defined by this unhibited creative expression um, and how I think and how I imagine and how I use my mind and how I connect with other people to collaborate with them. But my experience in LA so far has been pretty ecstatic. It has been really, really welcoming. There's just something about this place and the air and the ground. It just feels at home. It's strange. It's really, really strange. And I've never been here. Um, so yeah, I think I moved to LA to pursue my dreams. And I know that sounds very common and a lot of people say this, but I truly believe that I'm going to change the planet and the world and the way that it is and, and I'm not going to do it alone and, and this is the place to be. In terms of Syllable Studios, a, a, a space that brings creatives together to imagine fictional worlds and use world building as a way to centralize a lot of the creative ways because I think a lot of creative expressions are built in one offset ways. Like you see people building short films here people building one script here, people writing stories in here, but like if it can be done in the context of one world, one imaginal, imaginary world, an imaginary community, and that's building the brand, because big brands are, are suffocating the life out of small time creativity. And I think world building and what we're, what we're innovating at Syllable can be a central force that coalesces an organizing force that brings creators from different multimedia mediums to tell their stories in a different way because I think writing as is hasn't caught up with the democratization of the internet technology. And I think at the center are the writers who are the storytellers. And I think, I don't know, I just feel much more at home here. And I know that the hustle is, is starting now. Um, everything that I've done in my entire life will help, but I do know I'm gonna have to reinvent myself I'm going to have to find new avenues in my mind. I'm going to have to connect with new people. I'm going to have to put myself out there to be able to achieve what I know is very much a possibility um, to build something that's world class. But yeah, I think this, this move to LA is, I'm betting on me. <laughs> I'm betting on me. I'm not, I'm not letting the change be in the hands of other people other structures or systems or institutions. I think I, I can be that change. And I'm, I, might, I might not necessarily know what that 
might mean at this moment, but I feel it. I feel it's the right thing to do. Um, so yeah, so I wanted to share this, just my reflections of why I moved to LA and how my experience has been so far. I think that I'm, I can't wait to see what happens because <laughs> I'm living it now. A lot of uncertainty, but I think w between those uncertainties, I think lies a lot of positive, um, positive realizations that are necessary for growth. Um, so we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what happens. So yeah, please press the follow button down on my YouTube channel. I think I'll be, I'll be posting more V blogs and my experiences here. Let me know in the post what you'd like to hear more about as well. Um, support me on Patreon. I have a Patreon that's there too, but yeah, so thank you.